In Lebanon, the United Nations Children's Fund reported over 100 children killed in Israeli bombardments. And in Brazil, over 150 million citizens go to the polls for the first round of municipal elections in over 5,500 municipalities across the country. And in Ghana, thousands took to the streets of the country's capital calling for an end to illegal mining in the country. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Zoo Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Palestine, a new massacre by the Israeli occupation army after shelling a mosque in the center of the Gaza Strip kills 26 people. The Gaza Civil Defense Agency reported on Sunday that Israeli forces attacked a mosque turned shelter in Deir al-Bala near Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital. The agency spokesman Mahmoud Basal said that the attack was unannounced and that the Zionist regime aimed to kill more Palestinian civilians including children, women and elderly people. They also said that the collapsed hospital center received dozens of critically wounded people. Since last October 7th, Israel has killed 41,825 Palestinians and wounded more than 96,000. The United Nations Children's Fund says over 100 children have been killed in Lebanon by the Israeli bombardments. According to health authorities, the Israeli escalation in Lebanon has claimed the lives of over 100 children and another 690 people have been wounded over the last month. They have also reported on over 400,000 children having been displaced from their homes. UNICEF warns that children are enduring both psychological and mental damage in the midst of the Israeli aggression. Therefore, UNICEF says it has activated some 50 shelters in Lebanon to support children affected by the bombings. And in Palestine, also more than 11,000 citizens were arrested in the last of 12 month incursions by the Israeli occupation forces. Organizations defending the rights of Palestinian prisoners warned that in the last hours, 15 citizens were arrested in the territories of Hebron, Bethlehem, Pultalem, and Tubas. The organizations denounced that during the Israeli incursions, practices such as the de destruction of houses, the mistreatment of citizens, and the extrajudicial assassinations are carried out. These actions are part of the expansionist policy of Tel Aviv in the occupied territories, which have intensified since October 7, 2023, and have left 741 citizens murdered at the hands of the army, the police, and the Israeli settlers. And also in Palestine, authorities report the collapse of the health system due to Israeli occupation attacks. Health officials report that out of 38 hospitals in the Gaza Strip, only 15 are still partially operational in the territory. They also state that since the beginning of the aggression by the Israeli forces, at least 986 members of the health sector have been killed. In addition, some 130 ambulances were out of service as a result of the Zionist army's incursions. On the other hand, the health authorities announced that the Israeli siege against Gaza has left almost 42,000 Palestinians killed and more than 96,000 wounded. And in the Vatican City, at the conclusion of its midday Angelus prayer, Pope Francis appeals for a ceasefire in the Middle East, a release of hostages, and facilitating humanitarian aid to those in need. The Pope turned to the great suffering of the people of Gaza and the other attacked territories, the Holy Father, of the Catholic Church called for an immediate ceasefire on all fronts, including Lebanon, inviting the faithful in joining him in praying for the Lebanese people, especially for the inhabitants of the South, who are forced to leave their villages. In this context, Pope Francis recalled that later in the day he will travel to Rome with Maria and Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore to pray a rosary for peace. This population is suffering tremendously in Gaza and other territories. These are mostly innocent civilians, people who need to receive the necessary humanitarian aid. And in Spain, citizens demonstrate in the streets of Madrid to demand an end to trade relations with Israel and to condemn Israel's genocidal war against Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. 
Protesters demanded the Spanish government to cease diplomatic and commercial relations with Israel. Spanish citizens also denounced the sale of arms to the Israeli occupation. Demonstrators denounced that the government of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu persecutes and murders the people of Gaza, while Europe remains silent. Demonstrations in Madrid take place one day before the one-year anniversary of the beginning of the Israeli aggression against Gaza. Also in the city of Barcelona, as in 50 other cities, in citizens took to the streets to demand the end of the genocide against the Palestinian people. Demonstrators denounced the more than 76 years of Israeli colonization against the Palestinian territories and demand recognition of a free Palestine. Protests in Spain joined the acts of solidarity that the people of the world are holding one year after the escalation of the Aviv siege against the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, in Guatemala, citizens held a walk for peace a few hours before the one-year anniversary of the intensification of the Israeli genocide against Palestine. During the demonstration, participants made a call to the international community to defend justice, peace and freedom for the Palestinian people. Demonstrators asked the government to take a position of rejection of the Israeli genocide and of support to the Palestinian cause. Demonstrators denounced that Tel Aviv has murdered more than 17,000 children, while it has left more than 26,000 orphans. Those attending the event recalled the active participation of Israel during the armed conflict in Guatemala. And in Israel, one person has been killed and another 10 people wounded a shooting incident in the city of Beersheba. Authorities say the shooting occurred at three locations around the bus station. Police officers gunned down the shooter and deployed reconnaissance teams in search of other possible assailants. According to emergency respondents, several people with serious injuries were taken to the nearest hospital. Gun attacks in Israel have increased in recent weeks amid raising tensions over an, and rejection of the genocidal operation undertaken by the Israeli government in the Gaza Strip. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok with Tesla English where you'll find news in different formats, news updates and much more. We'll be right back, stay with us. Welcome back. On Sunday, Brazil is holding the first round of municipal elections to choose mayors and councillors in over 5,500 municipalities across the country. Nearly 150, 156 million Brazilians are called to the polls in these elections, which will test the strength of political parties vis-a-vis -vis the 2026 presidential elections. The city of Sao Paulo is one of the key cities in this race, where it has the largest number of voters in the country. Therefore, it is considered a good preference as to voter intention in Brazil. Experts say the voting in this city will be close between the left represented by Guillermo Bolos and the extreme Bolsonarista right represented by incumbent Mayor Ricardo Nunes. Let's go to Brazil with our correspondent Brian Mir for more details on Sunday's municipal elections. Brazil's municipal elections have officially ended at 5 p.m. today. All 5,569 polling stations closed their doors in an election that's in which 130 million voters were invited to come out and vote for their next mayors, vice mayors, and city councillors. Candidates from over 29 political parties representing a number of over 430,000 candidates, the most candidates that have ever been held in a Brazilian series of local elections like this today. Now the tallying process has already started. There were some problems today, but nothing out of the ordinary. Police announced that they'd arrested 82 people for alleged election fraud and confiscated 9 million reais in cash that was allegedly planned to be used to purchase votes. This number might sound shocking, but it's actually pretty normal in Brazilian elections. Also, there were isolated cases of violence, mainly against leftist candidates in different parts of Brazil. Sao Paulo mayoral candidate Guilherme Bolos finished his campaign with a huge rally on Paulista Avenue last night, and now people are beginning to wonder, is it good enough? The three candidates in Sao Paulo, besides Bolos, there's two far-right candidates, incumbent Mayor Ricardo Nunes and a YouTube coach and influencer named Pablo Marçal, who had his Instagram accounts turned off yesterday by the Supreme Court for election fraud, are in a statistical dead heat. We'll find out later tonight 
what that means for the second round in Sao Paulo. In the meantime, incumbent mayor in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's second biggest city, Eduardo Paes, is expected to take the election in the first round. And in all cities with a population of over 200,000, if no candidate reaches a total of 50% of the vote, there'll be runoff elections on October 27th. So for now, it's the end of a successful day of voting. Voters around the country are going to be anxiously awaiting the results of the elections, which should come out in the next few hours. In our news, more than a third of the children in El Salvador suffer abandonment and extreme poverty, according to a report by the Reserve Central Bank. According to the study, at least 391,292 minors have been abandoned by one or both parents, whereas 47,837 face abandonment from their mother. Among the causes, there is the current economic crisis in the country and the migration or death of one or both parents. The report foresees that the situation could worsen and that the number of children affected could increase to over 600,000. Venezuela's Minister of Science and Technology denounced that 62% of the messages shared on social media networks are violent. The Minister of Technology and Health, Gabriela Jimenez Ramirez, denounced that hate messages on social media represent a danger for the mental health of individuals. In this regard, the minister detailed that the messages spread about the country have no moral purpose and that they seek to fill the subjects with violence. In this regard, the minister called on society to be alert to this type of message and to seek contextual information to clarify the false and violent news that circulates on the net. The former president and candidate for re-election, Donald Trump, offered a campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, where almost three months ago he was the victim of an attack. The rally of Trump supporters happened in the framework of a very close campaign between the Republican candidate and his rival from the Democratic Party, Vice President Kamala Harris. During his speech, Trump also lashed out at his political opponents, arguing that the attempted murder last July was an effort to hinder his bid for the White House. The former president took the opportunity to criticize the approval of a new California law that will prohibit local governments from requiring voters to provide identification to exercise their vote in the state. Just to let you know that tonight I return to Butler in the aftermath of tragedy and heartache to deliver a simple message to the people of Pennsylvania and to the people of America. Our movement to make America great again stands stronger, prouder, more united, more determined, and nearer to victory than before we're going to make America great again. We're gonna win the election. We're gonna win the election. We now have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, there you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings, and more. Hit the subscribe button, activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Found short break, don't go away. Welcome back. In Ghana, thousands of demonstrators filled the streets of the country's capital, Accra, calling for an end to illegal mining in the country. The protest started on Thursday and wrapped up on Saturday. Unlike a previous demonstration held in September organized by pressure group Democracy Hub, police did not interfere. Demonstrators said they would continue to pressure the government to address the issue, especially for its damaging impact on the environment. Catholic Church in Ghana determined to push the government to take action is gearing up for a peaceful demonstration on illegal mining this next Friday, while the country's labor unions are set to declare a nationwide strike on Thursday. And on Sunday, Tunisians went to the polls to choose their president for the next five years. Analysts say current president Kais Saeed looks set to win, but with most of his challengers in prison or barred from running, he has been accused of suppressing political competition, and the opposition had called for a boycott to the elections. Only two other candidates were cleared for by the Electoral Commission to run against Said, leaving some Tunisians feeling apathetic. But despite there being some 10 million Tunisians with voting capacity, there is uncertainty about the turnout. In Thailand, authorities reported more than 34,000 families and hundreds of tourists affected by flooding in the central and northern regions. 
The Thai Disaster Prevention and Mitigation Department said that 20 provinces are affected by the floods. Off-road vehicles, boats, bulldozers have been mobilized to help in the rescue efforts in the affected areas. Animals have also been affected, including two elephants which died in the Elephant Nature Park in the province of Chiang Mai. For three weeks, Thailand, mainly in the north, has suffered severe floods and landslides that have caused at least 10 deaths. I have to come to my shop. I am worried about both my house and my shop. I have several elderly at home. I have to come to see the shop, which is my source of income. I hope the government will pay compensation to small shops like me. In Venezuela on Sunday, people celebrate the National Day of Salsa with a cultural colloquium in the state of Nueva Esparta. Musicians, culturists and salsa lovers gather on Margarita Island to recall the origin and evolution of this musical genre. Dance groups gave a demonstration of this Afro-Caribbean rhythm, which has become part of the cultural heritage of Venezuela. During the event, salsa experts call on young people to preserve salsa and to remember the Venezuelan orchestras that contributed to make the rhythm known worldwide. We are enjoying the performance by our Margarita Salsa Resistance, the orchestra, Cinco.Sun. We are very happy with this initiative to have this celebration, to share with them, long live salsa and long live Venezuela. And in the United States, the children's theater company La Colmenita de Cuba performed at the Apollo Theater in New York, deeply touching the audience. The entire presentation was around on the need of hope and unity born from the heart and soul of the children. Through these verses, the company showed its demands for the seize of the blockade upon the Antillean nation. The performance denounced the siege of Venezuela and the genocide against the Palestinian people. The show culminated with singer-songwriter Silvio Rodriguez's inspiring invitation to walk together as one. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website, telesurenglish.net. Join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. Hotel English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.